Welcome back to another episode of Mastering Master Mode. In this episode, we start off in the dungeon, and while I'm not entirely sure why I'm there, I am sure that I get absolutely destroyed by a Diabolist. I go back to try and recover the gold that I dropped and get annihilated once again by another Diabolist. That's a sign for me to stay away from the dungeon, so I'm right back to Duke Fishron. At the end of last episode, I mentioned that I ran out of truffle worms, which is how you spawn Duke Fishron by fishing in the ocean with a truffle worm as bait. So in between the last episode and this one, I grounded out a whole bunch more truffle worms to give me a bunch more tries at the Duke Fishron fight. Starting off this fight, you can see that I'm utilizing both the Spectre Hood and the Spectre Mask and the auto pause feature so that I can switch freely between the hood and the mask to deal either extra damage or heal myself up. Anytime I get around or below half health, I try and put on the hood so that I can heal back up to full. And once I'm at full health and comfortable with the distance between me and Duke Fishron, I'll switch back to the mask to deal extra damage to take Duke Fishron down faster. I'm still using the heat rate as I think this is the best bet for me to get the win against Duke Fishron. And as you can see, this fight isn't going so horribly. Any damage that Duke Fishron deals to me, I'm able to heal back up with the Spectre Hood. The biggest problems I'm facing is getting hit by multiple attacks in a row, like a bunch of sharps from the Sharknadoes, or if Duke Fishron dashes into me multiple times in a row. That's when it can be kind of hard to get the healing off, since Duke Fishron deals so much damage. Every hit from Duke Fishron deals well over 100 damage, so you've only got a couple hits in you before Duke Fishron takes you out. I make it all the way to phase three again, but just like all the other fights that make it to phase three, I just can't get my head around the teleportation that Duke Fishron does. I can't tell if I'm supposed to be dodging vertically or horizontally, and I'm not sure if I should be using a dash or not, since with the dash, you can get a little bit out of control due to the fact that there's a set distance that they'll push you, and you kind of lose control for a little bit of time while you're dashing. That gives Duke Fishron ample opportunity to teleport and strike at you again while you don't even really have control of your character. Not one to give up quickly, I'm right back into the next fight. I heal up and then I fish up Duke Fishron once again. I start out the fight using the Spectre Mask and while I deal a bunch of damage very quickly, I also take a ton. I come very close to dying within the first 30 seconds of this fight. I get hit by Duke Fishron twice in a row, run straight into a Sharknado, and then right back into Duke Fishron once again. Luckily, I was able to use a healing potion and switch to the Spectre Hood just in time to save my life because if I didn't, I would definitely have lost already. I mentioned it in the last episode, but again, one of the biggest issues I face is my movement speed. In order to properly outspeed Duke Fishron while it's doing its dashes, I need to be using my horse mount. There's two problems with that, however. The first problem is the horse mount actually has a bit of a warm up before it gets to top speed, so I need to be activating the horse mount before I actually need it. The second issue is that the horse mount can't fly like I can. What that means is I need to dismount the horse before I need to fly, otherwise I'll be stuck falling through the air slowly and a prime target for Duke Fishron to hit. I'm pretty sure once I overcome those two issues, I'll have a much better chance of winning this fight. But of course, those aren't the only issues. The biggest issue that I face is phase three of the Duke Fishron fight. I just can't wrap my head around the teleportation that Duke Fishron does, and I'm not sure why. Once again, I make it to phase three, and once again, I am taken out very quickly. I need to learn the teleportation pattern that Duke Fishron has if I'm to stand any chance of this fight. After that death, it's a solar eclipse, and these things are still super tough. I get taken out almost immediately by a nail head, followed shortly behind by a Fritz, and then a Reaper comes straight through my wall and takes me out while I was healing up from the last death, and then another nail head takes me out yet again. Those nail heads are tough as nails, pun intended. The nails that they shoot out are super tiny and hard to see. The solar eclipse did drop all the necessary materials that I needed for the Terra Blade, however. So I go ahead and craft that and get myself the achievement Sword of the Hero. The next achievement I'm going for is one that you get for defeating every type of slime in the game. In order to do that, you need to defeat both a Corruption Slime and a Crimson Slime. And since I only have corruption in this world, I need to build myself a 
crimson biome. Of course, while building the biome, I get a second solar eclipse in a row and I take a death to a psycho. Very quickly after that, I take yet another death to a nail head. Like I said, those guys are brutal. Once the solar eclipse passes, I'm sitting in my man-made crimson biome, just waiting for a slime to spawn so that I can take it out. And once I do, I get the achievement, Gelatin World Tour. No Terraria episode would be complete without three solar eclipses on three days in a row. So here's the third and my next death to a Dr. Manfly. My next death comes not to a solar eclipse enemy, but to a random wyvern that spawned while I was waiting for the crimson to spread even more so that I could farm it for some of the resources that I can't get in this world otherwise. After that death, I decided to head over to the Goblin Tinkerer to reforge some of the weapons that I got from the latest solar eclipse, including this toxic flask. This is a decent weapon and it's got a pretty big area of effect, so it's not too bad. The reason I'm showing you this is because in the last episode I said that the Goblin Tinker is a thief and here is proof. Just look at how many enchantments I need to go through to get to the enchantment that I want. Each time I reforge this it's costing me anywhere between like 7 and 20 gold depending on how good the enchantment was. That's absolutely insane but I do finally get the enchantment that I want. I give it a few test throws and then I head back home. One thing about reforging is you can actually make it a bit cheaper by using an accessory called the discount card. You get this from the pirate invasion and I decided to put it on to make the reforging costs just a little bit cheaper. Unfortunately for me, I decided to switch out my wings for the discount card and as I'm falling down my very long pit to the underworld, that thought does not cross my mind until I reach the bottom and go splat. Wings negate fall damage in Terraria, and since I had switched them out for the discount card, I wasn't technically wearing the wings, even though you can kind of see them on my sprite. And believe it or not, falling from the very top of the world to the very bottom does indeed hurt. In case you didn't see it, I took 8,973 fall damage. The crimson biome that I made sits just above my desert, and I found one of the best ways to farm monsters from the crimson biome is to actually fly down to the desert and then go back up and see what's spawned. Since my desert has been completely taken over by the hollow, prismatic lace wings can spawn, and when I spot one, I'm trying to take out my piggy bank so that I can grab my fishing net and capture it. When I get hit and one of the stars that spawns and deals damage to enemies, actually comes down and destroys the Prismatic Lace Wing. This causes the Empress of Light to spawn and I am not ready for this fight. I don't have any of my buffs available and I wasn't even on full health when the boss spawned. Not only that, but I have only ever beaten the Empress of Light one time. And it was after I had beaten Moon Lord just to get all the achievements in the game. I was super overpowered for the fight and it wasn't even close. This one on the other hand is the complete opposite. I'm pretty underpowered and I don't have an arena set up, nor do I have buffs, so I get totally destroyed immediately. The Empress of Light will be a good boss to take out in the future though, because it drops one of the best accessories in the entire game. It drops an accessory that allows you to have infinite flight with your wings, and it speeds up the acceleration and top speed of your flights. It is an incredible accessory, and getting my hands on it will be pretty much necessary in order to take out the Moon Lord. After that grim preview of what's to come when I take on the Empress of Light, it's time to finally take on the Crimson equivalent to the Eater of Worlds. This boss is known as the Brain of Cthulhu and it only spawns in a Crimson biome, which is why I had to build my own Crimson biome. Like I said, this boss is the Crimson equivalent to the Corruption's Eater of World boss, so it is very early on in the pre-hard mode progression. With all of my hard mode weapons and being post Plantera, post Golem, almost at the Moon Lord already, this boss doesn't even stand a chance. The most danger I'm in when fighting this boss is actually a Wyvern that randomly spawns and deals a bunch of damage to me. But even with that, I'm able to take out the Brain of Cthulhu with minimal issues, earning me the achievement Mastermind. And with that victory over the Brain of Cthulhu, we come to the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. And if you did, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more Mastering Master Mode. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next week.